On today's show, Ron Shera goes fishing. Oh, crappie man. He learns from Minnesota's crappie king. Can you hear that? The sounds of heavy metal music. Max Smith creates new knives in honor of Minnesota's outdoor legacy. Plus lake maps made by hand right here in the land of 10,000 lakes. Minnesota Bound, presented by Connecticut Water Treatment Systems. Hi everybody, Bill and I welcome you to Minnesota Bound. Up first today, Ron Shera shares the fishing boat with a fish whisperer. A guy who is known as Goose Gootsman. Watch him fish. I just had to hit there, a little tap. Come on, where you at, crappies? Yeah, he talks to him. There he goes again. Come on, you know you like that bro blood worm. He's a crappie whisperer, some folks say. All right, I'm gonna make another move here real quick. See if we can't get on the crappies. It's gonna kinda let us drift back. So who is this fella with a short white beard covering a cherubic face? Goes by the name of Goose, Goose Gootsman. I love getting on the water for one, just being out with nature and then just setting a hook and ripping them. You get them big ones and small, it don't matter, you know. Crappies can swim, but they can't hide from the crappie king. That love at first catch? Yeah, and then, well, my dad, of course, took us out a lot too. I don't know, I just loved them since I was a kid. They look beautiful, I like the coloring on them. They're fun. I don't know, they just, they bite all the time for the most part. A chilly day was not helping his crappie love affair. Water temperatures only 50 degrees. What are you thinking about on a day like this when you're looking for them? Are you uh, looking for a certain depth or what? Yep, right now I'm looking basically for the best weeds I can find. So what I do now, I don't even put my trolling motor down, which guys think I'm crazy, but I'll just cast around till I make contact. And so the crappie stock was on. Just like deer hunting almost. Figure out where they're at. Usually, they're gonna hit it, not too long. Crappies always like to come up to hit something though, don't yep. they? Yep, so I tend to start higher. If you fish underneath them, you may not catch any. Exactly. As for crappie weapons, Goose was well armed. I got all kinds of different colors. Turns out, black was the answer. Is it a crappie, finally? Is it, is it a crappie? Yeah. Hey! The crappie king. If I was gonna eat some fish, that's almost the size I like right there. Finally. Ah, yeah, the crappie hunter had found his prey. There we go. That's a crappie, I've seen it flash. You think so? It's a hell of a nice crappie if it is. Oh, yeah. Now, that's a crappie. You found them, Goose. Yes, we did. You found them. Look at that, look how pretty they are. That uh, is true. They're beautiful. You found the spot, buddy. Yep. Took us a little bit but we're dialed in. Oh, that one crushed it. <laughs> Got some weight to it. Crappie? Oh, yeah, nice Yes, crappie. I think so. There Yay, we go. Hey, crappie. Wow. All right, buddy, thanks for the fight. Some crappies aren't so lucky. Goose specializes in tasty crappie fillets. We eat a lot of fish at the Gutsman house. Especially when crappies seem to jump into his boat. Oh, crappie man. Hold down there, big guy. That's a beauty. That's a dandy. That's what we've been looking for. How big? A little over 13 right there. A little over 13. Very nice, Goose. Nice indeed. If you've ever wondered what a crappie addiction looks like, well, now you know. This makes me happy. It's my happy place. When you were a kid, that was your favorite fish, so I can't really explain it. We can say, John Michael Gutzman is not crappy at catching crappies. Coming up, Max Smith grinds away his days in the shop. 
His work, the stuff anglers dream of. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Connecticut Water Treatment Systems, Ice Castle Fish House and RV, Leech Lake Area Tourism, and by Coors Light. Up next, the art of the perfect edge, built by a Minnesota bladesmith, taking that craft up a notch, or two, or three. Anglers covet tools of the fishing trade. Things like boats and rods and reels and even knives. Precise tools we use to prep fish for the pot. Filet knives, often individual works of art. Max Smith understands that passion for the perfection of a clean, sharp blade. Max makes one-of-a-kind fillet knives, the art of Damascus steel, easily identified by its unique wavy pattern, a proven metal form all this time. Yeah, so Damascus, it's actually a very misunderstood, I guess you could say, steel. And it's a multi-layer steel of usually two different kinds that are forge welded together at a high temperature. That creates the layers that run through the steel beauty this bladesmith mastered. Time to throw on an apron, alligator, and get to work. The most that I've got this garage up to in the summer months is 129 degrees. That's with the doors open. Use my hydraulic press to essentially make a homogenous piece of steel. Max starts to squish the heated metal plates. I mean, from start to finish, probably go in and out 15 to 20 times, somewhere in there. There's so much time that goes into these Damascus billets that if I end up making a mistake and I have 45 hours into that billet alone, I'm I, a, a tear might be shed. <laughs> Pretty soon the billet looks longer than the forge. From there I can either keep adding more layers by folding it and repeating the same process, or I do what is called a stock removal. I take a piece of steel and I completely grind out the shape that I want. I think Max likes what he sees, so up next, the blade gets its curves. He cuts a rough outline and starts to remove the excess steel. End up really making it all by hand. Every single knife is completely hand ground. Now, Max makes sure it will always stay strong. Oil is typically the best way to go. After the quenching and everything's nice and cold to the touch and straight, this is when I'm gonna do the tempering. He brings the knife up to 300 degrees and holds that for two hours. And I'm gonna let temperature drop back down to room temp and uh, then do it again. So now, every bladesmith's nightmare wonderful world of hand sanding. I hate it, and I'd love to know a single knife maker out there that says that's my favorite part. Yeah, you're really taking out every single scratch you made prior and now going in the complete opposite direction. Unfortunately, it takes hours to do. <laughs> After the knife is completely sanded, which takes a very long amount of time. Max now cleans up the blade a bit. So this is just ferric chloride that is watered down. In the end, a seemingly perfect creation of crazy process, but only worth using with fish in hand. Oh, got a fish. We can salt that. What's our flavor? It's the right, the right flavor. One. Max finally takes time off to go fishing. Nice fish. Pan fishing fun that looks like this. That's a little guy. 
pursuit of a bladesmith, a day that culminates with Max's work in hand. Beauty in the form of a razor-sharp blade, forging functional art. And there's a part of this that has to be a business to keep going <laughs> and to keep getting better. But at the same time, there's a lot of knives that I'll make and then it's really hard to let them go because they look so good. Coming up, another outdoor sport with a legacy made right here in Minnesota. But first, lake maps made in the land of 10,000 lakes. Closed captioning provided by Star Bank. Okay, quick question for you. What do you get when you add up a love of fishing, lake life, and woodworking? The answer is the art of this next story. When you're a kid who loves fishing, who knows where life will lead? As a kid, we would always go to Pleasant Lake up in Hackensack, Minnesota. That's kind of where it grew my love of fishing. For Mitch Heil, his path took a few detours, including a tour in Afghanistan. Later back home, Mitch returned to his love of fishing and lake life, but combined it with his other passions he learned while deployed, woodworking and computer programming. Mitch creates 3D lake maps. Instead of paint, they're made with wood and lasers. It's not typical art where you're using a paintbrush or an easel or something like that, and it's or sculpting. And this works better than going to the gym and working out. Kind of always had an affinity for maps and just reading them, you know, do a lot of fishing, so I'm always looking at different maps of lakes here and there, but mostly it's just for fishing for me. When finished, this will be a map of Girl Lake in Cass County. You put all of the same depth on the same layer, so all of this is only cutting out, you know, 60 feet or whatever this one is at. So. It, all the laser is doing is it's just following the contours. Ah, uh, yes, the laser. Like, I can't do this on a scroll saw because it took me, you know, six hours or seven hours to cut out one for myself. And then I found out that laser cutters exist, CO2 laser cutters exist. So then it brings me over to my first proof of concept on a laser, a forest lake. And it can do a lot more detail, I'm using thinner wood. You can preserve your islands and your underwater humps a lot better. Mitch isn't alone in his love of lakes. He creates maps for many wanting to relive a memory. Water brings you life. You go out there fishing or you, even if it's just boating or skiing or recreational or in a lot of cases it's a sentimental thing where your grandparents had a cabin out there and you spent every summer there. His company name, Horn Dog Maps, is also unforgettable, named after his dog Sterling. Found you could train the dogs to look for the antlers. So in my family, it's always been kind of an inside running joke that we call the antlers, we call them horns. So we call the Sterling was my little horn dog. As for Girl Lake, well, it was special to the Sheriff family. Our family cabin once sat on that shoreline. It's one constant thing that stuck with me through my entire life. Out of all the other hobbies and everything I've ever done, fishing has always been there, front and center. We couldn't agree more. Straight ahead, the story of a Minnesota legacy best expressed 
one horse stroke at a time. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Oreo Cookies and Ritz Crackers, Mountain Dew, and by Totem Resorts, the premier destination for world-class fishing. In the land of 10,000 lakes, there is more than one way to have fun on the water. That's exactly why Travis Frank set out to meet up with this next group. When morning dawns over Minnesota's Long Lake, odds are good something or someone will be there watching. Nicholas Miller rarely misses this morning view, but he's not here to watch the sunrise. He's here to help keep a rhythm. Nicholas coaches the Long Lake Rowing Crew, a young group that gathers here six days a week to hit the water. This is our, our morning practice. They're one of the latest additions to Minnesota's ever-evolving rowing scene. Uh, we started this program in January of 2014. Uh, we, we pulled all, all, a whole bunch of boats together and got the kids together. We've been hard at it since then. A ton of young people right now, which bodes well for the future. In long, thin boats called a shell, these kids slice through water with every powerful stroke. Long Lake's crew adds to Minnesota's historic list of rowing teams. It's actually been here for as long as it's been anywhere in the U.S. The Minnesota Boat Club down in St. Paul is one of the oldest in, in the region. Launched back in 1870, St. Paul's original crew paddled the Mississippi River in what will forever remain as Minnesota's first organized competition. Today, with a fresh look, the same rules apply. The whole activity, when it boils down, is just a boat moving across the water as fast as possible. On Long Lake, speed comes with practice, really focus on keeping the shoulders, the upper body, ahead of the hips through the entirety of the drive. And subtle messages. This, this is our, our high, high performance uh, rowing technique. Uh, that will never not be funny. <laughs> you have to bounce the boat and you have to think about your technique and if you're rowing with other people you have to match up with them and it's just, there's a lot going on that you have to think about. After four years of hard work, Emily Steinbaugh's skills have taken her from water level to unexpected heights. I was recruited to row for Notre Dame. I'm very excited, yes. All right, let's get ready, ladies. Starting up at 22, 20, nice and long. Get your rhythm together. Ready, all? And go. It's a lot of work, but it's very rewarding, and I think it's worth it. From competitive crews to relaxed runs, Long Lake Rowing Crew offer something for all. You kind of learn rowing from, from day one. Good posture all the way through there. People come into it uh, completely fresh to it. It's not like baseball or football where you, you know everything about it and then you start. Keep your eyes up. If you're looking down at the boat, it's going to pull your head down. We're excited to be a part of, I think, kind of a new generation of rowing in the Midwest. It's a great sport. Just know if you head to Long Lake to catch an early morning sunrise, Odds are good you won't be watching it alone. Now that is a workout. <laughs> I think I'll stick with my 300 horsepower motor. Are you oh, okay with on, that? Come on, come on, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that about does it for us. We will see you back here next week. In the meantime, don't forget to introduce a kid to the great outdoors. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433.
To get more Minnesota Bound, including full episodes, go to mnbound.com. And to follow our latest adventures, like us on Facebook.